Inspector Vicky Border is on her way to a property in East Auckland, which she's had reason to visit before. I'm doing a recheck at this property. I visited it at the beginning of the week to find a um, adult cocker spaniel with um, severely infected ears and huge, huge mats. So I instructed the owner that veterinary treatment must be sought, otherwise I'll have to uplift the dog. The owner doesn't appear to be home, but Vicky's surprised to hear barking from inside the house, as she's previously been told by the owner that he's not allowed to have dogs inside. Hockey! Bop, bop, bop. Yeah, he's in there. But I think he's locked in the other room. So I might just climb around and see if I can look in the window. Deciding to check the dog out, Vicky goes round to the back of the house. Oh. That's not cocky. <laughs> Instead of the cocker spaniel, she finds a German shepherd that gives her cause for concern. What's wrong with you? This dog's obviously living, living in this room. Stinks. There is a bucket, but there's no water in it. But still no cocker spaniel. He told me the, the reason he had to keep the cocker spaniel outside was because he wasn't allowed dogs inside. But that German Shepherd looks like it's been in that room for a while. We need to have a chat with him about the living conditions of both dogs, actually. Because Vicky's had dealings with the owner before, Hi, she's Vicky. able to ring him straight away about the German How Shepherd and to locate the whereabouts of the Cocker Spaniel. The dog's at the vet. has been there um, most of the day because the doctor said that the ears were very badly infected, so it's going to take a while to to clean them up and also to um, clip off those huge mats on his ears. Vicky will return to check that both dogs and their living conditions have improved. Meanwhile, back at base, the SPCA is playing host to an unusual guest. This rooster's coming to us today. We tend to get in roosters quite often and they're pretty hard for us to place because obviously you're not allowed to have roosters in town and most people on rural properties already have a rooster. So unfortunately, a lot of them we don't find homes for. This guy, because he's a bit unusual looking, his coat type is actually called frizzle because the feathers actually grow in the opposite direction to normal. So he's been bred especially to look that unusual. Hopefully the fact that he looks a bit different and he's only quite small might be in his favour and we might actually be able to find a home for him uh, as opposed to him being sort of common run of the mill roosters that we get through. The frizzle rooster fluffs up his feathers for a photo which will go on the SPCA Pet Find website. In South Auckland, Inspector Kevin Plowright is following up a report of a stray dog. We had a call about a skinny dog in the area. It's turned out to be a, uh, a bitch that's had pups. She's just wandering generally in the area. She's found a house that had pups underneath. We need to get the pups out from under there. The difficult part is there's only about so much uh, head height under there, and the pups are at the opposite end to where the door is. So I've got to clamber under there and try and get these pups out. It's all quiet under here, just having a look around to see if there's uh, any pups hidden anywhere. They wouldn't have been socialised at all, so they're not going to be too keen on me finding them. It's getting very narrow under here. I knew I should have started that diet. An hour later and Kevin still hasn't found any sign of them. They're either very well hidden or they're they're gone from under here. After a thorough search, no mum and no puppies, so Kevin calls it a day. Well, that was easy. But that wasn't the end of it. The neighbours discovered they had some house guests. After all that, the mum decided she was sick of that house under there. I can see why, I wasn't too happy with it either. And she moved it under this house here and the people from here, um, the kids went under and bought the pups out this morning. We can sort out mum, she's a real little sweetheart mum, but she's got no fixed abode. I'll take them back to the SBCA and we can uh, make sure the pups are all good. Make sure the mum can feed up the pups for the duration that they need mum feeding them. 
and then we can look at uh, finding some homes for them and mum. It was lucky the pups were still with their mother. If they'd been found on their own at this age, they would have had no chance of survival. Abandoned animals like this often carry infections, so Kevin gives them a quick once over. A couple of little chubbies, got a big time flea problem going on. It looks as though all is well, but Kevin will take the bitch and her two pups back to the SPCA for a thorough vet check. Inspector Vicky Border has returned to the property housing a cocker spaniel in need of attention. She's also concerned about the German shepherd she saw locked in a very small room. This time the owner is at home. How did it go? Yep. Hey. Cut the hair. Excellent. Yep. And you medicating the ears? Oh yeah? Yep. Yep, sure. This dog's ear, you can see where it's been cut. They were huge mats. But you're looking good now. Although the spaniel's ears are looking better, Vicky's still not happy with his living conditions. Doggy's got no water. Yeah, having having just, just yeah. Having and also, when was the last time you cleaned? Uh, two, two months ago. Okay, you need you need to do it more often. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, needs Janola. Mm -hmm. Obviously, take dog out first. Oh, yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. because it's very smelly. Mm -hmm. It's not nice. Mm. All right. Yeah. OK, so we need to get some yep, water. Sure. The other day when I was here, mm -hmm. I had a look around and, and you got another dog inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. um, why have you got him inside? You don't like to go out. Because I would really like to see that dog. It's not easy to control. Well, I can hold him on the lead if you bring him out to me. Reluctantly, the owner agrees to bring the German Shepherd out. No. How old is he? Oh, I think he's 11. 10 or 11. He's got badly infected ears as well. That's why he's doing that. He needs a vet check, not just his ears. Do you mm -hmm. ever brush him? Oh, yeah. A dog with a coat like that needs to be groomed a lot. Do you walk him? Oh, yeah, sure. When he's in the room, does he have food and water? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah? yeah. And do you clean the room out? Oh, uh, yep, yeah, sometimes. It looked a bit grotty yeah. in there the yeah. other day when yeah. I looked through the window. Vicky persuades the owner both dogs need a vet check and they agree on a time for this to happen. And meet you there, 6.30. In the meantime, she gives him a few pamphlets to read on how to properly care for his animals. Yeah, thank you. OK. Yeah. It is frustrating. All I can do is try and educate him. I gave him a couple of pamphlets to read and I hope he does read them and he'll understand a little bit more about exercise and even sunlight, how important that is for the animal. It's just education. Back at the SPCA, the stray dog and her two pups found living under a house in South Auckland have been brought in for a vet check to determine their fate. Everything about is okay. She's got a couple of little scratches and minor wounds. The only issue, the significant issue at the moment is her skin. The thin coat on the sides is a bit of a concern. So what we'll do is we'll give her a vaccination and worm her and we'll hold her her stray time and we'll, she'll have a bath and we'll clean her up and then we'll just reassess her skin at the end of the seven days. Next up, there's the two little pups. Very young. Only between two and three weeks, three weeks maximum, really. But they're quite mm -hmm. chunky. And they're solid little ones. Because of their age, they're too young to vaccinate, but we do worm them because puppies are, are potentially born infected with worms, so puppies should get wormed from two weeks of age. And then they'll get a bath and they'll get defleed. They're not showing any signs of the skin problems apart from the flea associated ones. The mum and her two pups will be treated for their condition and be kept at the SPCA for their seven day stray time. While most of the SPCA's work involves taking charge of the needs of neglected or badly treated animals, another facet they've been developing is the outreach program, where pet owners volunteer themselves and their pets to visit people in institutions where pets are not usually permitted. It's assessment time, and while a lot of dogs have turned up, any sort of animal is welcome. I think people just associate it with dogs, but I've had llamas, miniature donkeys, we've got a guinea pig, rabbits, um, birds, any sort of animal that thoroughly enjoys people and is happy to be moved around from environment to environment and is happy and relaxed. But before any visits can take place, animal welfare attendant Annalise Reed will put the animals through some tests. Everybody wants to lift you up and give you cuddles. Let's see how you go. Hey, I know you're a bit scared. 
today. Yeah. This is done both for the safety and welfare of those in the homes and hospitals the animals are visiting, but also for the sake of the animals. The first thing I do is just observe the animal and see just its general behaviour with the owner. I need to have confidence that the owner can control the animal and that the animal is going to respond to the owner straight away. So that needs to be quite a, a strong bond. And then I just approach the animal and just see how it goes with strangers coming. We're not expecting no reaction when we're assessing the animals, we're just making sure that there's not a negative reaction. Most of the animals we deal with are happy, friendly, you know, and happy to be approached and things like that. Over the day, more than 30 animals will be assessed. An early contender is a three-year-old ragdoll cat called Titan. I think he'd be a good outreach animal because he's quite placid um, and he's quite happy to go to other people. He spends most of his days sleeping. <laughs> He's just a real people cat. He loves attention and he loves affection and he's quite happy to give it back. And I sort of thought it would be quite neat to brighten some elderly people's lives and they might appreciate him. <laughs> Annalise introduces the kind of equipment the animals might encounter on their visits. He's coping really well. He's not running and hiding or anything like that. Just doing a bit of rough petting. Um, not everybody is that gentle and it's basically to get an idea of so Titan, the ragdoll cat, looks likely to be a pass. The next volunteer is a small fluffy dog called Toby. With this assessment, I'm keeping Toby's mum close by. Basically, Toby's a little bit nervous and I feel that by me forcing him away from his mum, it's going to distress him too much and I'm more likely to get a really negative reaction. The idea isn't to distress animals and straight away I'm more inclined for animals like this to make sure there is definitely a quieter rest time, nothing unpredictable and the owner has to be aware that they have to be there for the animal at all times. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting enough of a noise response that I think that might be a little bit too overwhelming and distressing a little bit <laughs> too much. Oh, darling. <laughs> At present, Toby appears to be just a little timid to take part in the outreach program. Next up, a Doberman called Minnie. She's a lovely dog and she's really good with people. And I get a bit annoyed that the public's response to the breed is somewhat negative and I just thought it would be nice to put, let people know that Dobermans aren't what they perceive them to be and she's lovely with people and she's just enjoys getting out and doing stuff. Dobies, um, contrary to the perception that's been put out there, they're really, really affectionate and they actually really like to be touching people. The Doberman is another pass for the outreach program. Later in the day, a blue healer named Jessie arrives. She's a great dog, she's great with kids and other animals and everybody really, and I just would like to help people that are maybe in a home or young children that are sick, maybe bring some joy to their lives and if I can assist with their rehabilitation or make them feel better about life, then that would be great. She's not entirely full-bred blue healer. Blue healers are quite renowned for being snappy, but she's just got a great nature and loves everybody and everything. She's very social. She'll find her at a party on top of the barbecue table eating off people's plates, usually. Oh. Hello. <laughs> You're not faced by much, are you? Jessie, the blue healer, is obviously a winner, but there are situations their owners need to be aware of. I don't see her being a problem like in large crowds or one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. I think, you know, that's absolutely fine, as long as it's a more predictable environment. Jessie and her owner Kerry now just need to wait until a hospital or rest home requests to have an animal visit as part of the outreach program. In Tuakau, the abandoned frizzle rooster has found a new home. A former free-range egg farmer has taken a shine to frizzle and expects him to fit in really well. There, yeah, mate. There you are. There, mate. How about that? Hey, go and see the girls. Just went to a couple of shows, poultry shows and I just fell in love with them. Uh, we had the free range talks here for eggs first, and uh, once I went to the shows and I saw the different breeds, I thought, that's what I want, and I started doing that. There are six different breeds of chooks on John's farm, plenty of opportunity for Frizzle to make friends. He's in good nick, yes. You can tell by his eyes. Yes, and how keen he is, <laughs> and he's keen. <laughs> he's taken charge already. <laughs> Definitely get a 
a lot of love and care here. Spoilt, looked after really well. Now that's what you call a happy ending. Inspector Vicky Border is back in East Auckland. I'm at the vet clinic waiting for our friend to arrive with the cocker spaniel for the recheck on the ears and also the shepherd for the first consultation. Cocky the cocker spaniel arrives, but it appears the owner has misunderstood Vicky's instructions because the German shepherd has been left behind. Where's your other dog? Oh, I think I've I, I picked this one come for us, right? When are you going to do the other one? Or maybe next week, eh? No, it needs to be done this weekend. So what I'll do, I'll write you a notice instructing you that it must be done in the weekend and I'll give it to you. Vicky is determined that this pet owner gives his animals the attention they need. Okay, I'm going to give you written instruction and I must see that dog and it must have those ears treated. Mm -hmm. He better have it done by 9 o'clock Monday morning. I'm giving him two more days and then that's it. Jessie the Blue Healer and her owner Kerry are now up and running as part of the outreach programme. This placid, affectionate dog has found her niche visiting a home for the elderly. Jessie always enjoys coming here. She gets out of the car and bounds in to see her friends. The first person Jessie meets on her fortnightly visits is Ivan. They're quite good friends, these two, Ivan and Jessie. Right. She's quite happy to be here with you, isn't she? She is. Yes. She is, there's no doubt. <laughs> But Ivan isn't Jessie's only friend at Franklin Village. Hello, Laurie. How are you today? Good, I've brought your friend for another visit. Come on, Jess, come and say hello to Laurie, please. Good. In the dementia unit, there are always people pleased to see her. She's been on a big diet, so she's looking nice and trim for you. It's quite good to see their response to her when, when we walk down the hallway and they recognise us. Um, obviously, they don't always recognise a lot of things, so... That recognition is quite good and they are always happy to see us. She's a good girl, isn't she, Laurie? <laughs> Let's go and take Jessie for a walk. You take the leash and we'll go around the garden and have a little look at the flowers and things that you've been growing here. Tomatoes mostly. Are you taking her or is she taking you? Inspector Vicky Border's persistent efforts to make the owner of the German Shepherd with infected ears take his dog to a vet has paid off. Today she's at a clinic in East Auckland, where vet Leon Goldwater is concerned about the animal's condition. Severe infection in his right ear, which meant we needed to give him some sedation so we could give it a good clean out. But you can see he's still quite irritated, he wants to shake his head a lot and it's going to take a week before it's feeling good for him. His other problem is in his back feet and on his tummy, the skin's chronically inflamed there. And that's going to be many months of intensive treatment to, to control that. I don't know if he, he doesn't uh, look at him very much or doesn't do much with him. Couldn't imagine ignoring it if he were my dog. I'm just a bit concerned about future upkeep of the dog. The vet was pretty concerned about the severity of the ear infection. It's hard not to wonder if I hadn't have found the dog, the dog still would be in that room, untreated. Because of the poor condition of the German Shepherd, it was decided to uplift him from his owner. But sadly, he was not medically fit enough to be rehomed, so was put down. But the Cocker Spaniel fared much better. Frequent checks by Vicky meant its health and living conditions improved considerably. And as for the stray dog and her two puppies found living under a house in South Auckland, they've been treated for any infections and are happily being fostered by SBCA volunteer Glynis Amore until they're able to find new homes. Mum's settling in really well. She's full of confidence now. But when she first came, she was pretty scared and she trying to get out all the time. But they seem to go through just being like that when they first arrive. The skin condition detected in her vet check cleared up during her stray time. She's quite bolshy now, but she's really good. She's learning quite a few commands. Like, Mama, here. Good guess. Well, this one is just like Mum, very bolshy, aren't you? And the other one, the little one, it's probably settling down now, is really laid back and very different from this one and Mum. And after a few more weeks of foster care, mum and the puppies will be ready for adoption.